Hello students, welcome to Asan YouTube channel. Today we are going to study transportation in plants from unit 14, 10 standard signs. Let us begin with translocation in plants. In plants, water is absorbed by roots from the soil and food is synthesized by the leaves through photosynthesis. Water absorbed by the roots reaches other parts of the plant through the xylem. And the food synthesized by the leaves are transported to other plant parts by the phloem. The whole process is called translocation. There are different means of transport in plants. Let us begin with diffusion. Diffusion is defined as the movement of molecules from a region of higher concentration to a region of lower concentration without utilizing energy. The definition is well illustrated by this figure which shows the movement of molecules from a region of higher concentration to a region of lower concentration. Next is active transport. Active transport utilizes energy to carry substances across the cell membrane. It is often carried out by membrane-bound proteins that are also known as pumps. This figure shows the difference between diffusion and active transport. In diffusion, the molecules are transferred from a region of higher concentration to a region of lower concentration. Whereas in the active transport, molecules are transported from a region of lower concentration to a region of higher concentration by utilizing energy. Next is osmosis. Osmosis is the movement of water molecules from a region of higher concentration to a region of lower concentration through a semi-permeable membrane until an equilibrium is reached. Osmosis involves plasmolysis and imbibition. Plasmolysis occurs when water moves out of the cell which results in the shrinkage of cell membrane. Imbibition is a kind of diffusion where a solid absorbs water and gets sold up. Dry grapes soaked in water is an example of imbibition. Osmosis in plant cells are well explained by this figure. Uh, the, this figure illustrates the process of plasmolysis. When there is low water concentration outside the cell, the water from the cell moves out resulting in the shrinkage of membrane. This shows a flaxid cell when there is equal water concentration inside and outside. This figure illustrates the process of imbibition when there is higher water concentration outside the cell and the water moves inside the cell making the cell turgid. Now let us see how water is transported from root hair to other regions of the plant. This is the structure of a root and these are the root hairs. This figure shows the movement of water from soil to xylem in root. The root hair cells absorbs water from soil by diffusion. When water enters the root hair cells, the concentration of water in the root hair becomes higher than that of the cortical cells, which results in osmosis and leads to the movement of water from root hair cell to the cortical cells and then to the xylem. From the xylem, water will be transported to stems and leaves. Water absorbed by the root hairs can move deeper into root layers by apoplast and symplast pathway. In apoplast pathway, water moves through intercellular spaces and the cell wall without crossing the cell membrane. Whereas in symplastic pathway, the water moves through the cells via plasmodesmata. Next is transpiration. 
Transpiration is the evaporation of water in plants through stomata present in the leaf. Transpiration can be demonstrated by covering a plant with a plastic bag and after a few days you can see tiny water droplets in the plastic bag which is due to transpiration. Coming to stomata, stomata are pores present in plant leaves which allow gas exchange. Stomata are surrounded by a specialized cell known as guard cells which are responsible for the opening and closing of stomata. When the guard cells become turgid, the stomata opens. Whereas when the guard cells become flaccid, results in stomatal closing. Now let us see what is a transpiration pull. Due to transpiration, water concentration in mesophyll cells present in leaves are decreased. As a result, pressure is created at the top to pull more water from the xylem to the mesophyll cells. And this process is called transpiration pull. Transpiration pull also causes the roots to absorb more water from the soil to ensure continuous flow of water from the roots to the leaves. There are external and internal factors affecting transpiration. External factors include an increase or decrease in temperature, fluctuation in light intensity, an increase in humidity or decrease in humidity, and variable wind speed etc. can affect the transpiration in plants. Internal factors such as number and distribution of stomata, percentage of open stomata, water status of the plant and canopy structure can affect the transpiration. Now let us go through importance of transpiration. Transpiration creates transpirational pull. It, it helps in photosynthesis by supplying water. It helps in the transport of minerals from soil to all parts of the plant. Transpiration leads to evaporation of water in the leaves, thus cooling the surface of the leaves. It maintains the shape of the cells by keeping the cells turgid. Next is root pressure. It is the pressure created in the roots to drive water upwards to the xylem. It is generated by osmotic pressure in the root cells and is responsible for the rise of water in plants. Next is mineral uptake in plants. Plants receive nutrition from soil minerals. These soil minerals are absorbed by roots. Roots can absorb two kinds of minerals. First one is the minerals that are present in the soil as charged particles that are ions and the minerals whose concentration in soil are lesser than that in the root. Hence, most of the minerals required by plants are absorbed by roots. Then these minerals are transported to other parts of the plant by transpirational pull. This requires energy in the form of ATP. Hence, the mineral enters the plant following the same pathway as water. In the previous slides, we have seen how water and minerals absorbed by the roots are transported to other parts of the plants by the xylem tissue. Here, we are going to see how food synthesized by leaves using photosynthesis is transported to other regions of the plant using phloem tissue and it is called phloem transport. The phloem tissue contains sieve tubes, sieve plates and cytoplasmic strands. Phloem normally transports food in the form of sucrose from source to a sink. A source is the part of the plant that synthesizes food and sink is the part that stores the food. So source will be the leaf and sink will be the root. Thus, the food produced in the form of sucrose in leaves 
are transported by the companion cells through the sieve tube and enters the root cells that is the sink and this transportation is called phloem transport phloem transport can be bidirectional that is the food can be transported from leaf to root as well as from root to leaf whereas the xylem transportation is always unidirectional now let us study how sugar is transported from source to sink by pressure flow hypothesis glucose produced at the source is converted to sucrose and this sucrose moves into the companion cell and then to the sieve tube by active transport and this process produces a hypertonic condition in the phloem as a result water from the xylem tissue will flow to the phloem tissue by osmosis as osmotic pressure builds up in the phloem the phloem sap moves to areas of lower pressure by active transport sucrose moves into the cells where it is stored and this is the sink as sugars are removed the osmotic pressure decreases as a result water moves out of the phloem to the xylem next is ascent of sap ascent of sap is the upward movement of water and minerals from roots to different parts of the plant let us see different events in ascent of sap first root hairs absorb water from soil through osmosis and root pressure is responsible for the movement of water to the base of the stem then the stem water rises up to certain height by capillary action water molecules form a continuous column in the xylem by adhesion cohesion forces the last event in ascent of sap is transpiration pull transpiration pull is created by transpiration the transpiration pull sucks water from xylem tubes and leads to transpiration that is the evaporation of water from leaves this is the last topic in transportation in plants thank you for listening